Hey everyone, welcome to the 26th episode of Crush Cash Games, opening up with aces at the bottom left. Going to be playing some mid stakes, no limit, 3 6 and 2 4. Monotone board, going to be betting. Villain appears to be a fish, think he's going to peel with a decent amount of. Decent amount of flush draws. No reason to check and give a free card to like the you know the six of diamonds. I think that's just kind of silly. Seven eight suited at the bottom right. Not much information on anybody anywhere. This is a brand new session. Opting to peel because the small blind peeled. Small blinds range is going to have a lot of king queens, a lot of queen jacks, a lot of pocket pairs. Would assume less, a lesser amount of suited connectors being the, the first in the pot, especially with the possibility that we could be squeezing from the big blind. Pretty nice getting a limp at the bottom left table. Fish identifies himself right off the bat. Three six table at the bottom left looks really good. The three seed and the one seed are gonna be spots. Gonna have to keep an eye on them. Hope everybody has had a very good week. Hope if you're in the U.S., you've been enjoying the summer, getting a little cooler now. This uh, this weekend is going to be the last one that going to go swimming, so I'm going to take advantage of that. But fall is my favorite time of the year, and the action on Bovada is uh, kind of heating up. So good times all around. Four betting the eight nine off at top left. I think Villain's just three betting us a little too often there. Obviously, folding to a shove. Ace King suited at the bottom left. It's kind of a precarious spot because under the gun plus one is likely isolating weaker versus versus this fish. If we three bet, we basically fold out pretty much the. You know, most of most of the two two seats range. We also fold out the fish. I would rather try to keep the fish in the pot, and you know, keep in a lot of ranges that that we have dominated with ace king. If we do flop an ace or a king with the fish in the pot, we would lead. We would lead those boards, even flush draws with overs. Obviously, obviously, we called to keep the fish in and. You know, the small blind called and the fish folded, so <laughs> not exactly an optimal result. Um, three about bluffing at top right. Early on in the session, they don't have much information on us. We'll just have to see. I, I would say the population as a whole probably three bets a little too often on the button versus the cutoff, which is going to lead to us getting four bet. Uh, a little more often, but taking our chances early on when they don't have any information. Five six of clubs plan is to barrel. Very dry board. When we get called, they're gonna have lots of jacks in their range. I don't think jack, uh, you know, king jack or queen jack, even ace jack is gonna have going to have some problems uh, calling three streets from an under-the-gun raiser who bet out three ways. So I feel like we have a lot of a lot of fold equity. We have, you know, we have our gut shot and back to our flush draw, so not exactly zero equity. But the more important thing to take into consideration is going to be just when we bet three streets, we're just getting a lot of folds. Top left with the eights. C betting this board, obviously. 
one seed appears to be some sort of short stacker fish type. Uh, pretty much, pretty much a terrible turn card for us. Um, we block six eight, so it's the fish shipping like three x. Uh, he just has, you know, he has a six. Unlikely he has six eight. Potentially could have six x of a suit and be free rolling uh, straights. Uh, I, I believe that if I did have a straight, I would just fold in that spot. And the reason that we can fold a straight when he ships for a 3x is because he does have some 6 eights. At best, we're chopping. And at worst, we have almost no equity versus 6 eight. And then the third scenario is he has the straight just like us, and he's free rolling us with a flush draw. So. I would call if I did have 6x with a flush draw. I think that particular villain is probably raising the flop with the nuts anyway. So I would think that we're chopping a decent amount of the time. And when I have 6x with a flush draw, there's a good shot that I could be free rolling him. Unfortunately, our little fish left us at the top left table. Opening with king queen suited blind versus blind. The the big blind in, in this particular spot appears to be a fish. Wanna wanna get money in the pod? Don't want him to check behind. Got three bet at the bottom left and four bet bluffing with six seven off. Just like I said earlier, with the eight nine off or whatever it was, um, just gonna be three betting us a little light in that spot. So we want to punish him for it. I would say that eventually, you know, eventually guys are gonna gonna be five betting us light. Thus far, I haven't, I haven't uh, had like aces and and um, four bet them and and got called called the light five bet shove. I just haven't seen it yet over thousands and thousands of hands. So until they prove to me that they're gonna be five bet shipping super light, I'm gonna continue four betting them. 3-betting the 7-5 off, blind versus blind. Something that I'm implementing into my game more and more. 3-betting those small blind opens because they're three, they're they're opening just too too wide. Too, I, I don't see how they can turn a profit opening super wide. So we're going to be 3-betting them very polarized. Limping with the ace jack suited, gonna be limp raising. Getting action from a lot of hands that we fold out with the raise of ace jack suited. When we limp raise with ace jack suited, we, we can define our hand more so when villain four bets us than if villain three bet us because Villain four betting the limp raise is pretty rare. And I would say that he's got just tons of value in his range. He's going to have ace jack dominated. Checking back that board with top pair, hoping to induce a bet on the turn. And we, we did induce a bet on the turn and a bet on the river uh, with top set. So No regrets about the way that that hand went down. I think that, if anything, he lost some bets with top set there. When we do flat, the flop and the turn is coordinates the board and comes the flush card. We are, we are going to be inclined to turn our hand into a bluff 
rather than just go along with the showdown equity. So probably would have would have led to led to us doing something silly against top set. Feel like we are getting just uh, facing lots of three bets early on in this session. I mean, this doesn't even make much sense. Uh, second limper, hoping that somebody raises. The one seed is a big fish. If he had a big hand, he would isolate versus the one seed all day. So I have no idea what a limp raise there means. It, it just, to me, can't mean strength. Um, I feel like the two seed, sh you know, the three seed should be attacking the two seed in that spot. It, it's... The two seats just not repping anything. I mean, like you know, ace jack. I guess for value that they would, but but even ace jack, they're gonna they're gonna race to isolate the one seat. So it just doesn't make any sense. If the three seat was aware of that information, they need to be floating. They need to be raising the flop. They need to be exerting pressure on the two seat and not just let him get away with with that silly little move. Nothing really we can do with Ace Trey because we can't call him in raise and then raise back. I mean that looks even looks even sillier. Ace is at the top left, flatting me under the gun. Due to the fact that there's a short stack in the big blind and everybody behind us has been just three betting us three betting us with impunity. Um, three betting the nines on ace tray five at the top right. So the, the queen jack at the bottom left. At this point, villain has some straight draws. Villain has some flush draws. Villain has some queen x's. I don't think he's got a lot of jack x's. So I'm going to be checking, letting villain... Letting villain bluff or bet for value and obviously check raising all in the nuts. And villain, I believe I do look up that hand. Villain did have a queen. If he does have busted hearts or something like that, then he is going to stab the river. So, really, no reason to bet when we have when we have the nut full house in, in that particular spot, out of position. And that's just something that kind of grows with experience. We know villains inclined to bet when checked to, in, in that spot with his bluffs and with his value. So betting doesn't accomplish anything other than folding out his bluffs, which we don't want to do. And also, if he does have queen x, what, why do we want to, to only get one bet there when, when we can potentially get two? And he, like I said, he did have queen 9, which is uh, not good. <laughs> like, he literally... I mean, he beats absolutely nothing, and he snap called off his, his whole stack. And for sure, if we bet big on the river, he's just uh, he's calling and not raising. That's one of those spots where um, often my students will come to me and and give me a spot where they think villain should fold the river. You know, we should be folding out their entire range with a check raise, and you know the. The thing is, like, fish just don't like folding. I mean, the relative strength of their hand is not important to them. Queen 5-5, five five, betting at the top right. Just, uh... I think he's got a lot of queens in his range. And probably not going to be getting him to fold them.
we do have an under the gun range though, so we could exert more pressure. Just this guy's playing half of his hands, um, likely to be a fish himself. Don't really want to make fish fold top here, just like at the bottom left. Trying to make fish fold trips is just a, uh, you know, it's a mission like just destined for failure. Limping back with the queen six of diamonds because the fish that limped in is such a short stack. Just using our positional advantage, trying to turn king six into a profit, profitable spot. I would isolate this if the fish had four hundred, or you know even two two hundred dollars plus, so fifty big blinds plus. Fish just 3x ships it. Um, you know, and I, I would think that when when weak players do that, they have a lot of queens, queens in their range, and it's just it's just one of those spots where you know you're only going to get called by better, and it's a mistake that lots of lots of weak players make. Getting three bet at the bottom left. Getting it in with Ace King here if they opt to if they opt to jam. Ace on the turn at the bottom right. That's going to be a good barreling card for a villain. We are going to be calling for sure. Nines at the top left. Peeling one time. The turn is interesting jack that he continues to fire at. Our range shouldn't include much many jacks. It shouldn't include many two pairs. It shouldn't include many sets. Um... He should perceive our range as being fairly, fairly weak, which in my mind gives him much more incentive to bet the turn. Um, if he does have queen jack or king jack or ace jack, he's also going to bet the turn for value. Those types of hands, in my opinion, just aren't going to be holding up to a raise. Even aces, kings, and queens are kind of in a bind when they face a raise on the turn. King Jack at the bottom left. Um, the one seed is a fish. He gave us a great price to peel. We flop trips. Just trying to trying to get his stack right now. I think it's unlikely that he folds like queens, aces, uh, even tens. Tens are on the cusp for him. Probably not folding them. Um, pretty unsure what hand he, he peeled with that opted to fold the turn. Maybe ace-queen, an ace-queen type hand trying to make a pair. Going back to the nines hand, we can call the turn, but the problem with calling the turn is we incentivize villain to to bet the river to bluff the river with our seemingly weak range and we don't want to just be calling off three barrels in that spot with nines regardless regardless like it if we're just calling off three barrels in that spot with nines we're gonna it's gonna be a losing play overall the most plus EV play in my opinion is to to raise the turn to rep sets, rep two pair, rep super strength, and put his over pairs, put his over pairs, uh, you know, under pressure. And we can also put that bet in and check back the river and win sometimes against uh, ace queen of clubs, king queen of clubs, ace king of clubs, hands like that. And when we do raise the turn in spots like that, one thing we, we have to take into we have to always keep in mind that 
that we're, we're not just threatening them with the bet, with our raise. We're threatening their whole stack with, with a, river, a river bet. And they're very much aware of that. And so by, by investing, you know, how many ever big blinds that was, like 35 or whatever, we're, we're really threatening 75 big blinds from their perspective. Uh, they don't know we're planning on checking back the river. They just assume that the last bet is going in. Flying with four is in position at top right. King is a good card for villain. Villain likely to barrel the king. Again, it's a spot where we should be raising. And we don't. To really, I think we missed out on an opportunity there. Should have raised. Uh, the sixth seed is, he's just going to be betting that king so often. He's not going to have it very often. Um, he polarizes his range when he does bet that big trying to rep the king. He loses out on some of the middling strength hands that should be there. Open fives against the nitty player. Blind versus blind. He three bet us. Not much we can do. Ace queen off at the top left. Don't really think the three seed is getting it in with a super light. I mean, our fold to C we've folded to tons of C-bet so far just because we've been C-bet over and over and over again. Would much rather keep the bluffs in his range, keep the hands that we have dominated when we have position and initiative, and we get a very solid read of the situation post-flop. Like, if he, bets, if he bets that board, then we're likely to float we're likely to, to call the flop and bet the turn, potentially raise his turn bets. Since he, since he checked it back, I think he does have a lot of, uh, a lot of kings in his range, a lot of ace-kings, a lot of king-queens. Deciding to give him a little float out of position... doesn't really work when they river top pair. The reason we opt not to raise it on the flop with the king seven there is I don't think we really raise when we have trips. We're likely to uh, likely to just flat so King seven at the bottom right. Four betting, four betting the five seed. The five seed has not three bet yet. We have an itty image though. I do like to think that these guys take into consideration the fact that you know they haven't three bet yet. So that makes it makes them inclined to three bet a little lighter in spots where I'm likely to be likely to be full of it, which on the button is a pretty good assumption. And now look, after 30 hands, now his 3-bet is 8%, whereas it was 0%. So, such a small sample size, it's really hard to gauge player tendencies. Top left table doesn't look like a, the greatest of games anymore, but getting some, some new blood. Short stacker playing 11-11 is just uh, kind of sinful. We get to chip away at him. We get to put pressure on him. We get to raise his blinds very, very often. The three seed is going to be three betting us a lot, so we're going to need to be going to need to be four betting to combat the three seed.
we could peel with a 10-7 suited. Don't really mind it since the, the one seed is a fish and likely to come along with us. The three seed's going to have to play pretty straightforward once the fish comes along. We'd much rather flat the 6-8 than 3-betting it. 6-8 is it's not a terrible hand in position um, versus a wide opening range. This board, Villain is going to check call a decent amount with his range. He is going to check fold when he just completely whiffs thinking that we're going to be peeling kind of light. Three bet again at top left. That villain is just, uh, you know, three betting the ever living hell out of us. I'm pretty sure that that's the same guy that, that just insta shipped over our four bet as well. So, he's definitely setting the tone. So, how do we combat um, getting 3-bet like this over and over and over again? Just, we're going to have to 4-bet. I mean, that's, that's what it boils down to. We're going to have to 4-bet bluff. Um, going to 4-bet bluff, or we can tighten our preflop raising range. Either option is legitimate. Although I would go out of, you know, I would, I would have to say that, you know, we're only raising preflop at that table 16% of the time. So it's not like we're opening a ton. We're stealing 44% of the time. That's not exceptionally high. So tightening up, it's not really my style. I, I would much rather combat him by by four betting and just playing playing that kind of war. But overall, just getting into a pissing contest out of position against a player like this, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna affect your win rate. It's gonna it's not the greatest of spots to be in, so if you wanna you know, the, the safe, cautious option is to just leave the table, get at a better table, where a guy just, you know, isn't three betting you so much, isn't causing so many so many problems for you. That's the the great thing about online. There's always more tables available. It's not not a big deal. Like if you're playing live and something like this was happening, then it would be much more frustrating. Well, we got about 40 seconds left in this video, guys. Very much appreciated it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. I look forward to seeing you on Monday after I make my Video Vault episode for my website, EnhanceYourEdge.com. Hope everybody has a safe weekend, makes lots of monies playing poker, runs good, plays good, all that stuff. Thank you so much for listening as always. My pleasure. Take care.